Cape Coast Castle as it stands now is about 353 years. But it's actually the youngest and the smallest of all the castles we have in this country. Meaning the biggest and the oldest was built by the Portuguese 1482, and that is 536 years. There is another one, Cape Accra, which was built by the Danish 1661, called Usu Castle, but popularly known as Christian's War Castle. You know, Christian's War Castle was built by the Danish, and it's about 357 years. The second biggest and the second oldest. That was built as a slave castle. Elmina wasn't built as a slave castle. Cape Coast Castle was built as a slave castle. But this is the biggest slave castle you can ever visit in the whole of West Africa. Okay. The reason is that the dungeons here held at least 1,300 people to maximum 1,500 people at the same time. And the people were not all Ghanaians, they came from several parts of Africa. The majority of them were taken from West Africa. And if majority were taken from West Africa, they had to walk from wherever they got them, starting from Nigeria, Mali, Senegal, Benin, Burkina Faso, Africa, Coast, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and other places, barefooted, but they were tied up or chained. So they walked from there all the way down. And when they made it to the castle, before they sent anybody into a dungeon, each group of people that arrived here were owned separately by other European companies. And so they had to give them marks to identify them easily. And by marking them, they would use metals with initials of the merchants on them, put it into fire, take it out of the fire, and these red hot metals would produce in front of the people, either on the chest, either on the hand or on the back, to show that these people are not this person before they bring them here to spend at least two weeks or three months waiting for the slave ships to arrive and carry them through the Atlantic Ocean to the Americas. Now the men in here, there were about 1,000 African men in the dungeons. And in the male dungeons we have five rooms in it. So with the five rooms, it means mathematically each room was holding about 200 people who had to sleep, urinate, defecate here, and sometimes eat outside, and sometimes to eat in the dungeon. And they had wooden bucket in every room. If you want to defecate, you have to walk from where you are to the bucket and defecate in it. But always 24 hours, three months, or two weeks, you have to be in shackles and chains. You will never therefore go to the bucket to defecate, but because of all these metals on you, it slows you down so much so that whilst you are in here, you will sometimes have diarrhea, disease, malaria, fever, or other diseases. So that will make you defecate on yourself along the way. That is why most people would rather stay at where they are than to defecate, you will need to there and sleep at the very same place. And food they gave them was nothing to satisfy anybody but to keep them going from time to time. And since they ate in their palm, the hands wasn't even washed because you are going to stay here for about three months without taking a single shower. So who's going to wash your hands when you're just out of it? And because of the darkness, we walked through, and some of us were even scared. Whenever they sent people out of here to the courtyard, most of them became partially blind. They couldn't see very well, and people died here. As they died, they were not buried. They would just pick up the dead bodies, take them out of here, and throw them into the sea. And imagine how they would fill in here with 200 men. These and everything all over the place, with mosquitoes, houseflies, cockroaches, and you rats, I missed them. At some point, they even decided to stop cleaning the dungeons. So whenever they sent people out of here to the courtyard, instead of servants coming to clean up, they were ordered by their masters to rather cover everything up with sand and they brought the people back to sleep on top of it. And these waste was so much high that when people walked through, it was up to their uncle level. All the heads you see here represents the very people that were actually taken from Africa to the Americas. Before we continue down there, I want you all to know that the majority of Africans that were brought here to the Europeans were brought in by Africans. The reason is that before the Europeans arrived here, indentured servitude already existed. Or let's say domestic servitude already existed. 
where people normally got people during intertribal wars who were taken as prisoners of war and stuff like that. And they were supposed to be used domestically for fishing, farming, construction work, and so many other things. But then the Europeans saw everything that was going on amongst the African people, and they decided instead of we going out there to always capture people, let's rather go to the Africans and get people from them. So they started going to the Africans, and the Africans were supplied them with their people. And whenever they brought them people, they never took money in exchange because they were practicing the barter system. And with the barter system, the tribal leaders were most importantly interested in guns and gunpowder the more. Because the more of it they had, the more powerful they became during an intertribal war. And the more powerful they became, the more intensified the wars. The more intensified the wars, the more people they got and supplied to the Europeans, the more people the Europeans received on the other end, the more motivated they became in supplying arms to the local people. So that made the cycle of transatlantic slave trade go on for a period of about 400 years. Even though at some point, the Africans came to realize that, well, the Europeans have been treating their people badly. Some decided to stop, but the majority of them still went ahead and did the business because they were deeply rooted into it. They were not aware of the business. No, earlier, even here, they didn't know exactly what the people, what the Europeans were doing to them here. Even here. Even here. But later they came to realize it and still we went ahead and did the business. But if you are talking of overseas, whoever that was taken there never came back to tell the story. So how are you going to know about, about it? Exactly. There was no internet, no Facebook, no Instagram, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but aside all these things, you know. But they had run away. Well, they had runaways, but the runaways never came to Africa. No, no, no. from here. Exactly. And the only people that no, ended up. They oh, here? here? Well, here people tried running, but if you try running and they get you, you end up in a condemned cell where you die totally. And I'm going to take you there. Well. In the castle there was a church, wonderful people. And the church was known as the Church of England, which later became Anglican Church. And the church wasn't built just anywhere, but rather above the dungeon, me and you are in right this minute. So the Europeans will be up there worshiping God, praising him, saying, love your neighbor as yourself, and everything. And as they do that, African men and women will be in these dungeons in the filth, in shackles and chains, going through struggle, and suffering here and there. And it went on simultaneously for about 200 years. And if that is the case, do you think the people that were held were seen to be humans? Well, truthfully, they saw the Africans to be goods or let's say commodities. It was all about making money to them. Well, from here, whenever they sent the people to the Americas, they converted them into becoming Christians. And if they are going to convert them into becoming Christians, it's best for them to advertise the religion to them here so that when you make it there it becomes easier for you that is why they built the churches either above the dungeon or closer to the dungeon and so Elmina Castle if you go there the first Portuguese church was built much closer to the male dungeon so when they worship as you are in the dungeon you hear them worship them the same applies to Cape Coast Castle where they built the church above the dungeon with a spy hole at the very entrance of the church so when they worship at the top you're going to hear them here Around 1637, the Dutch took over Elmina Castle and built a church on top of the female slave dungeons. And if you are there when you worship, the women are going to hear you from the dungeon. In Christian's War Castle, the Danish built Presbyterian church on top of the male dungeon. If you are there worshiping, they are going to hear you now. How do you understand the English? Well, you understand, but they sing hymns, they do other stuff, and as an advert, they do it over and over and over again. Even if you don't understand your system, I just do it. Okay, let me go in for it. Let me give it a try. They get you. What's psychological? But this is African traditional religion. That is what, as Africans, we belong to before the Europeans came to Africa to do whatever they came to do. As well as the Arabs to do whatever they, they came to do. So we have a shrine here which is still very active. And before the shrine was taken away from here, it was a huge rocky mountain which is around here where the chiefs and the early settlers of this area worshipped. Until 1555, the Portuguese came around. They showed their interest in this land. Then the chiefs gave it to them. So this land was firstly, first of all, occupied by the Portuguese. 
followed by the Swedish, followed by the Danish, followed by the Dutch and the British. It was only the Portuguese that abandoned this area, but the Swedish were defeated by the Danish, the Danish were defeated by the Dutch, the Dutch were defeated by the British. So all of them took over the space through battle. I fight you, I defeat you, I take over. And it was the Portuguese that made the local people remove the shrine from here. But since it was a huge rocky mountain and that was immovable, they only took pieces of it into the country until 1960. When Ghana had become the republic, then the chiefs realized the people have left. So we have to take the shrine back. And by then returning the shrine, they came here, built this very altar, and brought the pieces and that was taken into the town back. And this is still very active, only that the stone hasn't got the original color. It's covered in blood, and that's not the blood of the human, but that of animals they sacrifice it all the time. And at the back of this very shrine, you can see this very thick wall. Wonderful guest, behind this thick wall, there happens to be a tunnel that goes about 80 meters from here to the door of your tent. So the African men that were staying here, whenever the ships came, none of them was allowed to walk out through the courtyard. They were rather shackled and chained to each other and were forced to move through the tunnel late in the night when the whole town is asleep and quiet. So if you go through, the heat trap in there plus the heat your own body will generate, will make it so hot that by the time you walk out of the door of your tent, you've lost energy. So you, don't, you won't have the energy to fight it and free yourself at that point. Knowing very well that when you get out of the door of your return, that's your moment of truth. Where you walk away from everything African, you start life again in the new world. Oh, God. <coughs> the only original door left in a castle. <laughs> Copper with pitch pine and <clears throat> And Wonderful people, everybody watch your heads. According to the doors here, all short people are even tall. So watch it. Let's come in. Let's see how it looks like in there. Please come. This place was designed for only African men. But I brought the women here so that when the men are suffering, they will get to be consoled by the women. But other than that, African men will be here with no food, with no water, with no light, with no air. And these were the very people that always fought to get out of the dungeons, the shackles, the chains, and the castle. The Europeans would become fed up with them. They would beat them up to become very quick, throw them in here in shackles and chains. And if you are here, you don't hear, you don't understand whatever people say because of the fire. You don't see the face of the plan of my friend. But the next day you realize the whole place is very quiet, and if the place is quiet, it means the person around you is dead. So you stretch your mind, you hold people, you hold dead ones, and you're going to be with them once you die as well. And maximum three days, everybody will die. Because there is no ventilation, how are you going to breathe? There is no water, how will you hydrate? How to be hydrated? So this was the condition. African men. I call freedom fighters, but the Europeans who call recalcitrant or stubborn slaves were made to stay. 